Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd. Habitifillah, a question was asked. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I know a sister who is a single mother. The child's father is a non-Muslim and isn't really involved. She's trying to balance school, finding a job, being a practicing Muslim, and raising her child as best as possible. She is struggling and doesn't really have consistent care for her child. Her mother typically babysits, but sometimes she drops hints that it's hard for her to watch the child. Uh, she has things to do. Uh, so she doesn't know how she will go to class and work. I feel that the sister is getting discouraged. Do you have any advice for her? Barakallah feek. Well, feekum barakallah. First and foremost, the advice that I would offer in a situation like this is the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yu aladheena amanu wa taqullaha haqqa taqatihi wa la tumutunna illa wa anta muslimun. O you who believe, fear Allah and uh, as uh, the, the true fearing of Allah. So fear Allah as much as you can. Wa la tumutunna illa wa anta muslimun. And do not die except in a state of Islam. So meaning hold on to your Islam. Hold on to your deen and fear Allah as much as you can that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way for you. And likewise, the statement of Allah Azza wa Jal fi kitab al-Kareem, Ya ayu ladhina amanu, kulu, Ya ayu ladhina amanu, attaqullaha wa kulu qawlin sadeena yuslih lakum a'malakum, wa yagfil lakum dhanubakum, wa min yu'ti illaha wa rasooluhu faqad faza fawzan azeema. Also the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says fi kitab al-Kareem, O you who believe, Fear Allah, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us with fearing Him. And we already know that when we have a command from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the asl or the origin of that kalam is what? Is that it is a, an obligation for us to follow. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to fear Him and speak the truth. And what's going to be the result of that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to rectify your deeds and rectify your affairs from having taqwa and whoever fears Allah Allah will make a way for him so look at this so many ayats about taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that's first and foremost is striving to implement taqwa Allah in your life yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaghfir lakum dhanubakum and he will fear uh, he will forgive your sins and whoever obeys Allah and His Messenger has achieved the highest success. So that ayat right there, if you implement that in your life as much as you can, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will rectify your affairs and make your affairs easy for you. And this is a means and a medicine for not being discouraged. And it's a reminder for me and you. And likewise, having sincerity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in, in that what you do, in all of your ibadah. Because this sincerity, this sincere intention with regards to your worship, with regards to your, uh, that whatever you do, uh, is, is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning taking care of your child is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's your duty uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has over you so fear Allah as much as you can and be sincere in uh, carrying out that duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing that that's a duty that you have to do and meet the rights of your child and that this is an act of ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will aid you in that. So this comes from with ikhlas lillah, and they weren't commanded except to worship Allah alone and be sincere, with sincerity, and, and uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone is, is the deed. So doing all of those things and those maratib of uh, of ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will assist you and make your affairs easy for you 
And likewise, taqwa just cannot be overstated because listen to this bit of a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ was walking and he was by some graves and he saw a woman who was crying severely in stress and crying by the grave of her child. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ittaqillaha wasbari. Fear Allah and be patient. This was the case of the mother who had lost her child. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam commanded her to fear Allah as much as she can and be patient upon her trial and tribulation. So what about the one who is living, who is dealing with the stress of the dunya, of trying to care for her child, of trying to work, trying to go to school, trying to bring a future for her and her child? Again, the nasiha is to fear Allah and be patient. And we know all the ayats and all the commands from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that that is the success, is through patience. To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As far as some other practical advice, because that will be the spiritual advice to help her to, to put her trust in Allah, to walk Allah, to have itimad Allah wa fi'l asbab, to rely and make efforts to do what she's doing, and she's doing that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward her and bless her and make her affairs easy. Make lots of supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that you can continue your duty to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and you can continue being consistent with your child. And Allah will, will, will aid you and make your affairs easy and good. So put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep relying on Allah. Keep uh, making effort and put your heart with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're going to be successful. You're going to be successful, but it's, it's going to come with trial and tribulations. Likewise, as far as practical advice for the sister, and because this is such a common thing for many of our sisters, it's common in the, for Muslim and non-Muslim, because the divorce, divorce rate in the world, without having any statistics in front of me, it, it's well known in some of the Muslim societies, it's almost 50% of divorces. And these are some of the places, Bilal al and other places. 50% divorces. So that means this is a common trial and tribulation and women are going to be struggling with having children and taking and being the single uh being the single provider of that child if the man is not taking care of his duty and responsibility to his ch children whether muslim or non-muslim so a last piece of advice is make an earnest effort along with your dua and along with putting your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make a sincere effort to marry. Because in general, sisters find, and we find many questions, especially from young sisters, who don't have the experience, but who are feeling weak or struggling with their iman. They want to make hijra, they want to do talab al-ilm, they want to do... They want to just make it in the society, uh, and they they want to guard themselves and their deen. But what better way to guard themselves? And this is the advice of the ulama, and this is what the nasus, the text, the divine text, uh, uh, encourages to do. As the Prophet sallallahu said, "Ya ma'ashar al-shabab, fa'min istata'a minkum al-ba'a fayyatazawaj." He said, O oh, you youth, the Prophet وسلم, he addressed the youth. Ya uh, ya shabab. Oh, you know, he addressed the youth. And he said, Whoever amongst you has the ability, then marry. In the al -ba the ulama they mentioned, some of the ulama mentioned al -ba is the financial means to be able to marry. So this is from the point of a man in general. And some mentioned that it's the Akramakum Allah, the sexual prowess, that the, the, the man has the ability physically to be able to uh, meet those physical uh, needs of a woman, as well as, uh, of course, the, the other spiritual and the 
and the financial, of course, is, is, is big and important, but also the physical as well. And so the point being is that the sisters, especially if they feel that they have difficulty in their deed and difficulty in their environments, one of the best means for that is finding a good, suitable brother. So that doesn't mean just jumping up and marrying the first brother around you. And that doesn't mean falling into traps and pitfalls that people lay for a lot of the single sisters uh, to marry. But it means be wise. So never throw out your common sense. Uh, and uh, finding someone suitable, either that you could get information about them through your family, through other families, and if you don't have those situ those uh, those uh, that community and that uh, that stronghold and that social connection, that at least you do a good check uh, within the community or as much as you're able to. So that way you do not end up with the countless cases and, we, and those are other topics that we don't want to really open, but you just want to be cautious. But sisters should strive to marry. And the last point I want to mention, which also we see that is increasing amongst many of the sisters especially some sisters who uh, may have difficulty finding a good suitor, is a lot of them, which they have a right to be because there's a lot of abuse as far as polygamy. So that sisters should also not always be closed, or they should not be closed to polygamy. But if they are a woman who does not, who cannot handle that at all, who has extreme jealousy, or maybe she's never been married and that's just... Uh, uh, a very difficult thing for her or against her idea situation to such an extent that it may be harmful to her, then that may not be the situation for her. But other sisters, if they want to follow the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, and they find a suitable brother is married, because a lot of times we know brothers that are some of the best brothers that I personally know, a lot of them are brothers who have been married for a long time and who have a track record. And some of the youth, sometimes even they have Muslim families. I know countless stories. Sisters, they were raised, they were raised as virgins in Muslim lands. They married brothers from other countries, Muslim families, within a year, within two years, it's finished. So marriage is a struggle for everyone. And marriage, and that's a whole other topic of compromise and knowing one another and, uh, and ha having the uh, the will to grow together and all the other things that come with uh, a lasting marriage. And so the point is, is that sisters should never be afraid of those situations, especially if they are in a situation where they have a child or children and maybe they find difficulty finding a suitor. The point is, is to find a good brother who is good for them who can take care of her financially, who can take care of her spiritually, who can take care of her uh, in, a, in all the means. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from the wise of the Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan.